Welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha B. It's rare that I celebrate happy things on this show. Last week, we did an eight-minute act on why it was actually bad and wrong for that Blue's Clues guy to come back. Look, I can't explain it again. Just find it on Roku. But occasionally, surprisingly, good things do happen. The bipartisan infrastructure bill, a key part of President Biden's legislative agenda, passed Congress late last week. The $1 trillion package is estimated to create 500,000 jobs over the next few years. $110 billion for highways, roads, and bridges. $65 billion to upgrade the nation's power grid. $39 billion in public transit. $65 billion to expand internet. $55 billion investment in clean water with money funneled to replace lead pipes and address water contamination. Contamination. Woo! Infrastructure! I celebrated the passage of the bill like I do most things, by drinking my booze alone. But I tied it into infrastructure by doing it under a bridge. Biden's infrastructure bill is a major victory. It's the largest public works bill since Eisenhower created the interstate system. Incredibly, he built it all on his own. That man could not delegate. The bipartisan bill will positively impact so many people. It addresses hugely pressing problems that we've been trying to fix for years, from protecting our water infrastructure from the effects of climate change and cyber attacks to removing pollution from water and soil. It will also help repair or replace our nation's bridges, 45,000 of which are in such poor condition they even got into comedy. The bill also provides funding to put zero emission buses on the road, so we'll finally have environmentally friendly bang buses that we can all feel good about. Yes, I'm Samantha B, and yes, I know about the bang bus. I was the bang bus driver. The benefits of the infrastructure bill will be felt all over the country, from Alaska, where it'll help fund a ferry system for rural communities, to West Virginia, which plans to clean up abandoned coal mines, to Rhode Island, which wants to build electrified trains to quickly get residents to Boston, and more importantly, get them away from Boston. While it's not perfect, this bill is a big victory for Biden. It's also a victory for the Democrats, who sealed the deal thanks largely to the Congressional Black Caucus, which brokered the compromise between the party's moderate and progressive factions, and Nancy Pelosi, who wrangled progressive members' support by barraging them with voicemail messages. I feel like maybe half of them signed on to avoid getting more voicemails from Nancy Pelosi, but still, it worked. Democrats should be celebrating this win. Trump had 208 weeks of infrastructure week and never managed to pass shit. But Biden embraced the spirit of compromise and passed his bill with bipartisan support in both the House, where 13 Republicans voted for it, and in the Senate, where 19 Republicans boosted it to 69 yes votes. And if that number doesn't say mutually beneficial, I don't know what does. Unsurprisingly, right-wing Republicans don't see it that way. Congressman Madison Cawthorn tweeting, vote for this infrastructure bill and I will primary the hell out of you. We had 13 Republicans that decided to step up and help her in this way. I think what they did was put themselves on a path to early retirement. Republican Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene lashing out at her colleagues on Twitter. She writes, Republicans who hand over their voting card to Nancy Pelosi to pass Biden's communist takeover America will feel the anger of the GOP voter. I mean, first vaccine mandates and now Americans don't even have the right to die in a bridge collapse. <laughs> this isn't the country my grandfather died for in a bridge collapse. The bill Democrats passed last week is massive, but it's just half of the puzzle. There's another major spending bill Democrats still need to pass this year. There's more to come as Democrats work to finalize part two of the president's Build Back Better agenda. Paid uh, family and medical leave. That is something that all other developed countries do, but we don't. That's in the Build Back Better Act. The sprawling social safety net bill will expand many government programs, including the child tax credit, universal pre-K, and more. Pre-K? Like, we all know Republicans only care about pre-pre-pre-K. The current version of the social spending bill, also known as Build Back Better, has expanded health care subsidies, affordable housing, immigration reform, and includes four weeks of paid family and sick leave. But that is just the start of what Americans need. Unlike the bipartisan infrastructure bill, this one has no Republican support. So Democrats will have to pass it through budget reconciliation, meaning 50 members of the Democratic caucus will have to support it in order for it to pass. So I'm not saying we should bribe Kirsten Cinema, but if a box of new jean jacket vests just happened to fall off a truck and into her office, it wouldn't be the end of the world. 
While we wait to see what happens with Build Back Better, we should celebrate the fact that last week's bill is a critical, life-saving victory that may be Democrats' greatest achievement of the last 10 years. Well, second best. This is our fight song. Take back my life song. Full disclosure, I have very little fight left in me. Democrats should be touting this victory far and wide because not enough Americans understand the positive impact this bill will have on them. Voters need to hear about Democrats' successes, especially ahead of the midterms. As the hottest and wisest person on earth once said, let's get loud. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, like and subscribe. If you'd like to hear some opinions from a man in a lifted truck, leave YouTube on autoplay.